Hello. Stand Up World episode 17 is what we're calling this one. Thank you for reconnecting, rejoining, or if it's your first time, this is Stand Up World, the little podcast that should, could, would, I don't know, but we have a good show for you today. We're talking about some of the, the pieces, new pieces we have up on the, sti- the site, the site, the site, standupworld.com. We have, and I'll tell you about them later, piece on the great Jay Leno and on Bumping Mics, my all-time number one favorite stand-up comedy act. I love those guys. And on Ms. Rosebud Baker, who I'm swagging out, wearing the swag today, which I bought and you can buy on her website and from her Instagram page. This is a great sweatshirt. I love this. Right. There's a piece from my book, Stand Up World, chapter. A, I repurposed it as a profile this week on standupworld.com. So we have it up there. And we'll get into all that later. But I want to talk. I uh, want to there's a, give you a little snapshot of where the world's at. I saw a tweet from a woman in London talking about a trip to France and a restaurant where she could pay for the meal with the cute little machine on the table with her credit card and how she didn't have to wait for the waiter to make two trips and it made everything so simple but moaning why they didn't have it in restaurants back in London, blah, blah, blah. So I tweeted her jokingly that in Los Angeles, we have Uber Eats and DoorDash and stuff that brings the food to buy right to our house. And we never even have to go into the restaurants and how easy that makes our life. And then some guy down in Mexico City tweeted me that he and his wife knew how to cook their own dinner so they didn't need to go to a restaurant or have someone deliver from one. And that was even simpler and nicer. And next, some guy in northern Canada tweeted to let me know he and his partner have chickens and a garden and grow their own everything and hunt on the woods behind their cabin. Blah, blah, blah. And they didn't need anything from anyone. And there's nothing simpler than that. And then finally, some dude had Thailand just tweeted a real short thing. He said, in Thailand, we eat our dogs. And just like that, the thread was over. It was a mic drop. Everyone went back to their lives. Simpler is not always better. And here's another fun tweet run I got into. A woman in Brazil bought a pair of, she says, She writes, I bought a pair of stretch pants at a church sale in town and they fit like pajamas. I have not taken them off since. So happy I danced around my house in them. So I tweeted back, I think those are my pants. I lost them on vacation there a few years ago. I don't want them back. I'm just saying some of that joy belongs to me. I'm a little short on it these days. P.S. I actually found them myself on a beach in San Diego. So a bunch of other people tweeted about it. And then some guy in San Diego tweets, I happen to have left those pants on the beach in San Diego. They were taken off of me by a tree of Marines in a wild fit of whizzing and jizzing at the end of a night of debauchery in the gaslight district not gonna lie i had a ton of joy that night not in the pants though they were long off me at that time okay and finally the woman in brazil a few hours later tweeted i lied about the church sale they were my dad's pants he had them for years 
and I bought them new at the local five and dime. You're all full of shit. By the way, at this point, so are the pants. Okay. On this same kind of theme, I got this wrong number text the other day that came in to me. I get this. Hey, mom, I'm going to be late. I reply, wrong number, sorry. And then I get, you sure? She's not with you. You're not being full of shit. And I replied, don't know your mom. And after a beat, I get back the text. She's a whore. Which I replied, couldn't confirm or deny, don't know her. He texts me back, she is, trust me. <laughs> and I text this kid, don't know you, but I will. He texts me back, thanks. <laughs> and then I throw in, if she is a whore, I check the local alleys, then the marine base, start there. That's the best I can do. And then he actually writes thanks. <laughs> and then I got, I got another wrong text not long ago, which was actually a little more threatening. Out of nowhere, I get this text. When I see you, I'm going to bonk you upside the head so hard you're going to hear the sound of my voice for a decade. So I text back, who do you think you're texting here, bonk master? And I get this, the little worm that stole my car and drove it in the river, that's who. So I reply, sorry, sport, I have my own car and I don't live anywhere near a river. Yeah, where do you live? He texts me. So I reply, I live on the corner of Riverside Drive and I need a car avenue. Now go fuck yourself. Then I blocked him and I hid under my bed. Okay. This week on Stand Up World, if you go to it now, you will see a profile on Mr. Leno. Jay Leno, who is an old friend of mine. And when I... I have a long history with Jay. When I got out to L.A. when I was a kid, he was really, really good to me. He really was. He, um, God, I remember him calling my dad and just talking to my dad, telling him I was going to be okay. And he actually, be when he'd go to Detroit, he was friends with my dad. They were both into cars. And my dad lent him a, a, a fixed-up old car he had to drive around when he played clubs and shows in Detroit and Jay's a great guy I will tell you you know there's been a lot of comics that crapped on Jay over the years and there's two sides to every story you know but Jay's a great guy and I write about it in this profile that you can read there but he's a great guy and there was a time at the comedy store and in the improv and the clubs in LA when he was the best. He was the gold standard. And every comic would, if Jay was on, you were in the room watching, learning, and studying. There's so much to be said about Jay. And here's a piece. I played this in the Comedy Store documentary. I don't know how women talk about sex with other women, but guys are real self. Like, you know, a guy, no guy gets laid once. You know what I'm saying? So I was like, hey, Bob, how'd your date go with Susan last night? Eh, not bad. Went back to my place. Guess we bawled about 52 <laughs> times. <laughs> then you talk to Susan. Well, Bob had a little problem. <laughs> Guess he'd been working hard at the office. <laughs> Plus, the more guys are around, the more macho the story. That's the big thing, you know? A guy will never really say what happened, even if he had a good time. You know, a guy could have gone to the girl's house, he might have taken a bubble bath, had a few laughs, hugged, went to bed. Happens a lot. But you never hear a guy tell it the way. A guy will always say, yeah, I took it back to my house. 
Hung her by her heels, hit her with a gun butt a few times there. Yeah. Fired a dum dum bullet in her brother's forehead. Yeah, I had a good time. What else this guy said? Well, you, know what this, you know what else this guy said? And I thought this was fascinating. This guy said that the average male has 10,000 orgasms in his lifetime. Called my doctor Thursday, I have nine left. <laughs> He's taking some knocks lately, and he's such a beast. He just just gets up and keeps going. He's the ever ready battery of comedians, but he's a fine human being. He really is. He was raised well, and um, like I say, I have a long history with him. But I, he's very special to me, and I, I think I really he's a great guy, and like. And no matter what anyone says about him, you know, he's a survivor and a trooper. And, you know, he always claimed, stuck his claim. He wanted, he, he, he wanted his place at the table and he earned it and he deserved it. And he loves his craft. So check out the profile. Jay Leno and Stand Up World. I want to talk about these guys. Foundation Cigars. These are the Tabernacle. It's a great cigar. I was in uh, Vegas last week and I went into a great cigar store. And he, this guy had this guy had all the Foundation cigars and he was telling me they were selling like crazy. You know, I'm I'm smoking the Olmec right now, which is the number one new cigar on all the big magazines. It's just an amazing cigar, Padron, Cohiba quality, Nicaraguan cigar. It's and uh, Foundation Cigars is run and owned by my buddy Nick Melillo. And uh, if you ever see Joe Rogan smoking that Joe Rogan cigar, custom cigar, Nick makes those. And he's just a craftsman. He's an artist. He's got a new cigar. I think it's called the Senager. Not sure, but he sent me some of those. And man, those, those are golden. But Foundation Cigars. They're as good a cigar as you can buy right now. And... Every time I go into a cigar store, anywhere, that's selling them. A, they can't keep them in, and B, the owner tells me that's the cigar they're smoking right now. Now I want to talk about Rosebud Baker, who I'm wearing her sh sweatshirt, actually. It's a really comfortable sweatshirt, I got to tell you. And I bought it off her Instagram site, I believe, or else her website, I'm not sure. But Rosebud Baker is a star. She is relatively new comic, although I'm sure she's been around forever. She's new to me the last few years, but she's just great. She's just an amazing talent, you know? And, uh, just edgy and funny and fresh and raw. And she's got this great new special called Whiskey Fists. And she was just down at the American Comedy Company in, in San Diego, which is really one of my favorite clubs. And I didn't get a, a chance to go down and see her, but she's been writing on Saturday Night Live and touring. And she's really just an amazing act. It's someone that I, I think she's also an actress and you're going to be hearing a lot more of her. Here's a piece from her special. Don't whiskey. ever ask a nurse how her day went. No, you're going to get a story that's going to years up, right? It will. I called my sister. Hey, how's your day? It was pretty rough. <laughs> Surprise. I took the bait. I was like, what happened? She goes, I had to pull the plug on my favorite patient. Your favorite patient. What do you do to the ones you don't like? <laughs> she 
hated that. She was <laughs> so mad. Not everything has to be a fucking joke, Rosie. And I was like, no, you set it up. I feel like I knocked it out of the park. <laughs> this was teamwork. We're both killing. <laughs> It's Rosebud Baker. And if you go to standupworld.com, I have a book out called Stand Up World because I can't come up with another title. Stand Up World Podcast, standupworld.com, Stand Up World, the book. I really, I'll one day come up with another title of something. But it's Stand Up World. It's called Essays on the World's Greatest Art Form. And, the, and one of the essays is on, funny enough, Rosebud Baker, and I've repurposed it as one of the profiles this week. So you can read it and learn a little bit more about Young Baker. That's this week on Stand Up World. And if you sign up for the newsletter, you can get the book free. Free. Do you hear me? Free. Yeah, it's free. Foundation cigars aren't free. A lot of Jay Leno shit isn't free. Rosebud tickets to see Rosebud Baker's not free, but my book is free. Why is that? I don't know. Finally, I want to talk about, you know, I I will say, I always say this is this guy's special's great. This gal's special's great. This is a great art. Jay Leno's great. Everybody's great. And number one, that's because I only talk about people that are great. I don't bother. I don't waste any time on mediocrity. I'm here to turn you on and to highlight and spotlight the best of stand-up comedy. But, and look it, I love Louis C.K., I love Chappelle, I love Burr. I love the best of the best. I love Leno, Rosebud. But to me, my number one favorite act of all time, my number one a act, my number one act in comedy right now is bumping mics. Jeff Ross and Dave Attell. If you ever get the chance to see them live, and I don't even know if they're performing together right now because the two of them their careers are just on fire they're just after years and years of doing this these guys have become two towering legends in this business uh, in their own rights you know they they just sell out everywhere they go individually but together bumping mics is is just that's my safe space okay that's my happy place I just love them. It's like great jazz music to me. It's, you know, when I, I went through a really tough time, I lost one of the, I lost my boy, you know, my nephew, who was practically my son, you know, who was in our lives. My wife raised him, and uh, my life got so dark for a while, and I just I thought, well, I got to laugh. And I just got on a plane with Jeff Ross a couple of years ago, a year or so ago, and I flew with him to Chicago just because I knew seeing bumping mics would make me happy. And it sure did, man. Those guys, they're just so good. And here, here's here's a piece from their amazing Netflix series that's up there now. You can just go see it. It's three episodes but here's a piece from it dave you look like you shop at AutoZone. thanks <laughs> jeff if you can believe in yourself half as much as you do in cream cheese hi everybody i'm jeff this is my best buddy dave this is gonna be a, a crazy crazy weekend for this three-night run uh, bob saggett's here what the <laughs> You look like you guys own, like, rivaling pawn shops. You're not a cop, are you? <laughs> I'll do you feel. I feel like there's a man with a vibrator in my mouth. You look like an umpire during a rain delay. Jeff looks like he runs the gift shop at a planetarium. You're 
You're in great shape. You probably don't even work out. I used to work out, but I hurt my back carrying the show. <laughs> and then... <laughs> God, that's gonna be on Netflix. There's a there's a thing I wrote up up on Stand Up World right now on bumping mics. Give you a little bit more insight and some more links on how to see them. You can check it out. But bumping mics is really fantastic. And finally, I want to say, Louis C.K. Last Saturday night put out a great special from Madison Square Gardens that you can stream for the next, I think, couple weeks. But it, it's really a great piece of work. He did a great job and had some great openers and a, and a great jazz musician. And um, it's a great special. Really well done. So go check that out at louisck.com. And I also want to thank John Tobin Presents. Guys at John Tobin Presents, here's what they got coming up this next week or so. And by the way, speaking of John Tobin Presents and all their tomfoolery, I will be performing at their club, Nick's Comedy Stop. February 24th and 25th in Boston. My very first headlining gig in 28 years. I'm really excited about it. If you're anywhere near Boston, come see me live. I've been working out since June, working out hard, writing a lot of stuff. And I, I'm really fired up for this these two nights. And actually, I'm going to be in the Boston area for about 10 days. But... Those are the two nights where I'm actually officially headlining, and but that and that's a that's a historic club, Nick's. It's where a lot of a lot of people that you know and love cut their teeth, got started, and worked and really figured it all out for many years. And uh, I'm really excited to be there. So that's it. That's episode 17 in the can. Closed up shop on 17. Thank you very much. I really appreciate. You know, the numbers are picking up. People are listening. It's making me very happy and excited to do this and do more of this stuff. I'm loving it. And um, God bless. Love you. Bye.